Hi everyone, we will start uh, with a few words. This is our third lecture that is part of the CASP, that is Center to Advanced Chronic Pain Research and the PBO, Placebo Beyond Opinion Center at the University of Maryland. We launched this series this spring. We have still another lecture in June and we will be restarting in 2023-2024. Also, I wish to thank the sponsorship of our Pain and Placebo SIC from the International Association for Study of Pain, and in particular GRADE, that help us to coordinate with the ISP and bring research about chronic pain and placebo across countries. So thank you very much to those of you who are attending online, and thank you to those who are here today. With this, I would like to ask our co-director of uh, the Casper Center to come to the stage. Okay, welcome to our uh, seminar series. Uh, I would like to welcome our today's speaker, Dr. Uh, Shamey uh, Babel. Uh, Dr. Babel is a full professor of psychology at uh, uh, Jagiellonian uh, University in uh, Krakow, Poland, where he serves as a director of the Institute of Psychology, the chair of the Research Discipline Council for Psychology, and the head of the pain research group. His research interests include placebo effect in pain, the memory of pain, and psychological factors affecting pain perception. Professor Babel has co-authored nearly 100 scientific publications and over 100 popular science publications. In 2019, he was awarded the status of fellow by the Association for Psychological Science for his sustained outstanding contributions to the science of psychology. So please welcome Dr. Babel. I look forward to your talk. Hello, everyone. To those who are here and uh, online, uh, thank you very much for the kind uh, introduction. I would also uh, really like to thank uh, Professor Koloka uh, and the faculty uh, for having me here and for uh, organizing this uh, lecture, inviting me for this lecture. I'm uh, really honored and uh, this is also a big pleasure to be here for the fourth time. Uh, I have always uh, enjoyed uh, both the university, of course, Coloca Lab uh, and the charming city. Uh, today, uh, I would like to uh, speak a little bit about three main lines of research uh, from our lab. Um, uh, actually, I'm, uh, I'm planning to talk about the learning mechanism of placebo effects in pain. Uh, uh, I would like to provide an overview uh, of the current state of the art uh, in uh, understanding of uh, the learning mechanism underlying placebo effects in pain. Uh, I will begin with a brief discussion of uh, on placebo effects in pain, including the main theoretical models, uh, findings from, uh, subsequently I will uh, summarize findings on um, uh, from studies investigating learning mechanisms of placebo effects, such as verbal suggestions, uh, classical conditioning, observational learning, uh, and operant conditioning. Uh, while I will primarily focus on studies conducted by my pain research group at the Aguilonia University, I will also uh, refer to research from other uh, laboratories. Uh, in conclusion, uh, I will compare recent research findings with existing uh, theoretical models to highlight the directions in which further theoretical accounts may be developed. So uh, let me start with... Uh, um, the results of some meta-analyses which shows that uh, placebo, placebo and nocebo effects are real, uh, that, they, uh, that they are large uh, in comparison with no treatment. Uh, and uh, with uh, uh, acknowledging it, 
um, uh, it is also important to, sh to, uh, to say that um, there are also data showing that not only placebos are effective in comparison with no treatment, but they can be as effective as active treatment, actually. Uh, one of the recent meta-analyses nicely showed that actually there is no difference between uh, placebo effects and uh, paracetamol effects for treating low back pain. This is also only one uh, 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 one example, uh, but very important, uh, especially in light uh, of the fact that uh, uh, pre uh, the, uh, in light of prevalence of chronic pain, um, which affects like one in five uh, uh, adults uh, uh, all over the world. So it's like uh, one billion and a half uh, all people suffering from chronic pain. And uh, only in the United States, uh, the financial annual cost of pain to society is estimated to be up to 635 billion US dollars. Uh, and it's suppressed because of heart disease, cancer and diabetes altogether. Uh, so uh, consequently, understanding the mechanisms of placebo effects can then contribute to the development of more effective interventions for managing pain uh, and, uh, uh, of course, cheaper ones, yeah, because placebos are actually cheap um, uh, if they are uh, applied uh, 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 appropriately. So uh, it is not very surprising uh, that placebo interventions are utilized in clinical practice by up to 95% of general practitioners. So they are very, very common uh, um, in clinical practice and not usual, uh, it doesn't mean that, uh, uh, that they are um, uh, applied openly. In most of the cases, they are actually applied uh, deceptively, sometimes even for the doctors who may not know that they uh, uh, actually apply placebo. Uh, like, for example, in some countries, homeopathy is very popular, uh, uh, which is, we all know, actually a placebo. So um, the question then shifts from whether placebo, um, placebos work to understanding why they work. And um, placebo effects are considering learning phenomena, an idea that was first uh, proposed as early as in the uh, 1950s. Um, however, it was uh, not until 1980 when Ian Vikramasekara published the first theory of placebo effects as a conditioned response. And according to his model, a placebo serves as a conditioned stimulus and placebo effects are conditioned responses. Uh, thus, placebo effects are acquired based on the principles of classical conditioning. Uh, this model was challenged by the response theory, um, uh, uh, by the uh, um, response expectancy theory proposed by Irwin Kersh in 1985. And according to, uh, to his theory, expectancy is actually the mechanism underlying placebo effects and classical conditioning and other learning processes, including observational learning, verbal instructions, um, uh, serve as mechanism, um, uh, serve as a means by which expectancy is acquired and modified. Uh, so in other words, placebo effects induced by classical conditioning, observational learning, or verbal instructions are mediated by um, expectancy. And this perspective uh, is nicely reflected in the very influential learning model of placebo effects proposed by Luana Coloca and Frank Miller. And uh, uh, according to, um, to their model, um, uh, placebo res effects result from expectancies that are acquired by interpreting information from the psychosocial context, which includes communication, um, uh, uh, of course, uh, conditioned and uh, observed uh, stimuli. And since the publication of the seminal uh, uh, model in uh, 2011, uh, numerous studies have been conducted that support uh, the model's assumptions and also provide some additional insights, uh, which I will briefly um, uh, discuss uh, today. 
Let's start briefly with um, uh, verbal suggestions, which is, of course, this is perhaps the most common method of inducing placebo effects as patients are simply informed that they are receiving a potent drug such as painkiller. Of course, we have also now uh, this line uh, of research uh, with open label placebo when, um, uh, part when participants, patients are uh, openly informed that they are receiving placebo, but Actually, they are also informed that placebo is effective. So it's quite tricky because it's uh, uh, still inducing expectations. Yeah, it's not just, it's truly saying that placebo works, but still they are in informed that, this, that what they receive is working. It's not that they are saying that this is something that is uh, not working as we could expect uh, uh, from the label open placebo. Uh, and the um, recent meta-analysis showed that, uh, uh, yes, uh, verbal suggestions are very, very effective in inducing placebo, uh, uh, placebo uh, effects. And um, now let's uh, move to a classical conditioning. As I mentioned earlier, the classical conditioning account of placebo effects considers placebo as a conditioned stimulus and placebo effects as conditioned responses. And although the idea uh, was proposed in, uh, in 1950s, it was only in 1985 that Voodoo, Respect and Coleman success successfully induced placebo effects through classical conditioning in humans. Actually, until uh, 1985, all the research on placebo effects and, con uh, and uh, classical conditioning were done in uh, animals. Um, uh, since 1985, we have a new line of research uh, uh, with um, uh, humans. And um, first of all, before I uh, go to placebo effects, it's worth noting that classical conditioning can generally modulate pain experience even without application of placebo. And uh, a meta-analysis uh, has shown that classical conditioning can at least induce hyperalgesia. Um, there is... Uh, um, uh, not uh, uh, not good evidence for um, classical conditioning to uh, induce uh, allodynia, and generally uh, it is still a matter of debate uh, whether uh, pain can be truly considered a conditioned response. Actually, the data that we have so far uh, is not convincing that uh, placebo that, that uh, pain can be a conditioned response, and more research is needed. Uh, but anyway, it, uh, this is interesting line that without placebo, but by using classical conditioning, we may, uh, we may change uh, pain uh, experience. Now, coming back to uh, um, uh, uh, um, placebo effects and classical conditioning, uh, um, while many studies have demonstrated the involvement of expectancies in placebo effects induced by classical conditioning, uh, recent research has challenged the notions that uh, uh, expectancies always mediate such effects. Um, uh, our lab was involved in uh, one of the line of research uh, in which hidden conditioning without any verbal suggestions was conducted uh, and expectancies were measured uh, on a trial by trial basis. And in a series of four studies, we found that hidden conditioning not only effectively produced placebo effects, uh, but also showed that uh, expectancies didn't predict or mediate placebo hypoalgesia or nocebo hyperalgesia. And furthermore, when we asked participants at the end of the study whether they, whether they had noticed the relationship between placebo stimuli and differences in pain intensity, most of them denied any awareness of it. So based on these results, it seems possible to induce placebo effects without participants being consciously aware of it. And the second line is, uh, of, of research uh, uh, is uh, uh, in line with this uh, notion. Uh, in, this, um, uh, uh, in this paradigm, um, um, participants are presented uh, with placebo stimuli subliminally without their awareness. 
uh, visual stimuli are first paired with high or low intensity pain stimuli. And after completing the conditioning phase, the same conditioned visual cues are presented um, subliminally during the testing phase. And it has been observed that pain stimuli pre uh, preceded by subliminally presented conditioned uh, uh, visual stimuli are rated less or more painful depending on whether they have been previously paired with high or low intensity pain, rate, uh, pain stimuli. So this indicates that placebo hypoalgesia or nocebo hyperalgesia can be induced without participants' conscious awareness. And moreover, uh, it has been found in one of those studies that both placebo hypoalgesia and nocebo hyperalgesia can be induced not only by conditioning supraliminal stimuli, but also by conditioning subliminally presented stimuli. And um, placebo effects uh, induced this way um, uh, suggest that participants were not uh, aware of anything that was happening. So actually, this suggests that expectancy may not have played a role in the production, uh, but of course, uh, expectations were not measured in, in, uh, uh, in this line of, uh, uh, of studies. Um, anyway, uh, it can be uh, stated that uh, the results of this line of research is in line with, with the first uh, line. And um, I have uh, a few years ago um, summarized the results uh, from both lines of uh, studies and concluded that expectancy is not always involved in placebo effects induced by classical conditioning, which may suggest that classical conditioning represents a distinct mechanism of placebo effects. Now the question is when classical conditioning induces placebo effects with, uh, uh, medi uh, with mediation of uh, expectancy er and when not. And one of the hypotheses that we have for this is that um, there are like two types of placebos used in, um, uh, uh, in the studies. One is, let's say, medically connoted. So they are pills or there are some creams, which usually have some meaning for participants. Another line is when we use uh, some abstract like colors or like uh, abstract geometrical features as type of placebo. Uh, so the, the, the question, the, 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 the reason why in some studies uh, conditionally induced placebo effects are mediated by expectancies or not may be the type of uh, placebo use. So we, we expect that in those uh, medically connoted placebos, because participants come with some previous expectancies, it is easier to uh, involve those expectancies in placebo uh, effects. But if we use some, you know, not, um, not medically connoted placebos without previous meaning, without some previous expectancies, then probably placebo uh, effects are not mediated by expectancies. But of course, this is something that, uh, that needs to be tested uh, um, uh, in the future. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it is important to highlight that uh, expectancy remains an essential factor in placebo effects, as well as in other uh, areas of research. Um, uh, our book provides a comprehensive overview of the current state of research on the role of expectancies in various domains of interest with pain, uh, including, uh, including pain. Um, what is, um, I think, also interesting is it, that generally in medical practice, uh, but also in our laboratory studies, we combine uh, two, type, two, two methods of inducing placebo effects. So we combine verbal suggestions with uh, classical conditioning. And this is also, as I said, in clinical practice, when, part when people come to the doctor, and they not only come with previous experience, but they also are provided with some suggestions, some verbal information from the, um, from the um, medical doctor. So the question is then, what is the relationship between or what is the actual input of both types of uh, learning into the effects we, uh, uh, we observe? And uh, we know from meta-analyses that uh, 
uh, actually uh, verbal suggestions that are congruent with classical conditioning produce stronger placebo and nocebo effects. By congruent, I mean that uh, when verbal suggestions of hypoalgesia is combined with experience of hypoalgesia. By incongruent, I mean when they are uh, opposite. So when the uh, when verbal suggestion, for example, uh, is of uh, uh, hypoalgesia, but the experience conditioning is of hyperalgesia. Uh, and uh, this is something that uh, that I believe is is important to distinguish between these two types uh, of methods and to see what actually they uh, add to the effects we observed. And uh, we have. Um, uh, did a quite complex study to um, uh, to look for these factors, to 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 look for their uh, input. Uh, we involved in this study fifteen groups, which employed um, uh, suggestions of hyperalgesia or and hyperalgesia, placebo and nocebo conditioning, and all possible combinations of these procedures to induce placebo effects. Moreover, we manipulated the order of the procedure so that verbal suggestions are either preceded or followed classical conditioning. Uh, so, for example, as you can, as you can, for example, see group uh, in group eight. Uh, in group eight, we uh, we had first uh, classical conditioning of uh, nocebo uh, and then suggestion of placebo. Yeah, and for example, I don't know group eleven. We first have uh, suggestion of placebo and then uh, uh, nocebo conditioning. Yeah, so we we involve all the combinations to see what's going on, and the results are quite interesting. Uh, First of all, uh, we found that a stronger placebo effect and only placebo effect is observed when suggestion of hypoalgesia precedes classical conditioning of hypoalgesia rather than following it. So when the procedures are congruent, it's better to start with classic with uh, uh, with verbal suggestion and then like support verbal suggestion by uh, classical conditioning. So first uh, suggestion, then uh, experience. But this effect was uh, uh, not found in case of nocebo uh, um, effect. So actually, uh, this is uh, uh, only in placebo effects. And um, uh, the most in interesting, I believe, are were the cases of incongruent uh, procedures. So when we mixed uh, uh, the direction of uh, um, uh, of uh, uh, conditioning and uh, suggestions. So the effect was in line with the direction of the last procedure used. Yeah. So which is, I think, nice because if it wouldn't be opposite, then it would mean that whatever we do next uh, wouldn't make uh, wouldn't change uh, uh, the experience of uh, pain in uh, in participants. So. Um, that is why we title this uh, um, uh, the study "Order Does Matter." So it's it's important to um, uh, to remember what we are actually uh, doing um, uh, at the end. And one more interesting issue was that in the study we actually also found total uh, mediation of expectations. So actually, all the results were non-significant when uh, expectations uh, were um, uh, included in the model, which uh, 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 highlights that uh, actually um, uh, expectations are very important uh, in placebo effects, especially when we mix the uh, uh, the procedures when we combine uh, suggestions with uh, uh, with uh, conditioning. And our results from from this quite complex study are somehow uh, consistent with our previous study, in which we aimed to compare the effects of conditioning and verbal suggestion, but only in the induction of placebo hyperalgesia. So we get like uh, pure conditioning of uh, verbal, uh, of uh, uh, um, nocebo hyperalgesia. Then we get congruent conditioning. So verbal suggestion of nocebo hyperalgesia and um, uh, 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 classical conditioning of uh, nocebo hyperalgesia. The most intriguing um, group was the incongruent conditioning in which we applied verbal suggestion of placebo analgesia and conditioning of nocebo hyperalgesia and the group with only uh, with verbal suggestion of nocebo hyperalgesia without conditioning. And what we found was uh, quite interesting. 
because first of all, verbal suggestion was not uh, effective uh, in this study to induce uh, nocebo um, uh, hyperalgesia. Uh, when uh, we uh, applied uh, classical conditioning only, it was effective and uh, congruent procedures were also effective. So when we, uh, when we combined uh, conditioning with, uh, uh, of uh, nocebo with uh, verbal suggestion of nocebo, we got, as you can see, a stronger effect, but it was not significantly stronger. So actually uh, verbal suggestion didn't add much to, to this effect. But it's interestingly, in this incongruent group in which uh, verbal suggestion of, hyper uh, of hypoalgesia uh, was first provided and then um, conditioning of nocebo hyperalgesia was uh, uh, organized, then we found actually nocebo hyperalgesia. So actually the study uh, shows that in case of of nocebo um, hyperalgesia, uh, classical conditioning may prevail uh, verbal suggestions. But of course, this is, um, this is just one of the studies and uh, more research is, uh, uh, is needed. Uh, anyway, um, uh, I believe that we still, that, that this is important to um, differentiate the effects of verbal suggestions and classical conditioning in uh, placebo effects. And uh, uh, I hope for further studies uh, in this area. Uh, let's now move to observational learning. Um, according to observational learning account of placebo effects, um, uh, people learn to experience placebo effects, not true, not necessarily through direct experience, um, as in the case with classical conditioning, but also by observing other people who experience hypoalgesia or uh, hyperalgesia as a result um, uh, of the placebo application. And observational learning uh, account was proposed not as uh, early as classical conditioning because it was proposed as a mechanism of placebo effects in 2002 um, by Butzin and Caspi. And seven years year later, Luana Coloca and Fabrizio Benedetti were the first to induce um, the placebo effect through observational learning. Um, and it's worth noting, uh, again, like, like with classical conditioning, that uh, observational learning may, may modulate pain even in the absence of, um, uh, of a placebo. Uh, we recently demonstrated that uh, observational learning can transfer tactile stimulation into pain experience. And that uh, so actually participants were um, calibrated to, uh, to get tactile stimulation, but because they were observing the model who was uh, experiencing pain um, uh, in the lab, they also started experiencing uh, pain. But also recently we, um, uh, we showed that uh, observing other people's pain ratings can modify not only current um, pain experience, but also future pain experience. And in this study, we, uh, our participants experienced the same painful stimulations twice. First, they came to the lab, they, they, uh, they, they um, were provided some pain, and then after experiencing pain, they were provided with pain ratings or other alleged participants uh, concerning, of course, this first stimulation. So they were able to compare their feelings with feelings of alleged other participants. And then there was a break, like 30 minutes. They were coming back to the lab. They were again exposed to the same pain stimulation. And we found that although the they pain the, the pain ratings they were provided first were uh, related to the first pain stimulation they had effect on the uh, on the uh, subsequent pain stimulation so this way we were able to show that uh, verbal uh, modeling can affect not only current pain but also future uh, uh, future pain this was a study on um, uh, on hypoalgesia um, but we may uh, expect that this can also um, uh, um, be applied uh, in case of uh, hyperalgesia, which would, of course, have uh, some uh, um, harmful effects uh, that we should um, avoid. 
But um, returning to uh, placebo effects, there is growing evidence that placebo effects can be in used through observational learning, uh, starting from uh, uh, Professor Koloka's uh, first study, then many uh, new studies uh, arise. And uh, in 2018, uh, together with Dr. Anita Baitzar from my lab, we have reviewed existing studies and proposed the social learning model that uh, integrates their findings. We base not, we, we were ba the, the model is not only based on, uh, on the research, um, studies, but also on um, social learning theory by Albert uh, uh, Bandura. And uh, our model includes three different ways uh, of transmitting pain uh, information from the model to the observer. First, it's uh, direct um, a physical demonstration of pain behavior, which we refer to as behavioral modeling, when the observer is in the presence of the model. So model is um, uh, observed in person. Uh, in case of symbolic modeling, uh, there is a presentation of um, uh, just a videotape model. So there is no uh, live uh, uh, model uh, in the lab, but so, or not only in the lab, um, but we observe only the, um, uh, the model, uh, which is videotaped. And the third, mo uh, most, I think, uh, strange type of verbal modeling, uh, of uh, uh, observational learning is verbal modeling, um, uh, in which actually participants are um, uh, um, uh, provided with description of pain behavior like pain ratings, for example. So they don't see actually a model um, uh, either uh, in person or videotape. They are just provided with uh, verbal, um, uh, uh, verbal ratings or verbal description of, um, uh, 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 of their behavior. And um, our social learning uh, model, um, uh, first of all, emphasize the observers um, uh, individual differences, uh, uh, including empathy as a trait. Uh, and we, of course, uh, in line with, uh, um, uh, with uh, other um, accounts, theoretical accounts, we also um, uh, hypothesize about the uh, mediating role uh, of expectations uh, in, uh, in placebo uh, effects. We were like, it's impossible uh, from theoretical point of view uh, to induce placebo effects by observational learning without uh, involving expectations. So that was quite obvious for us. And I say because uh, uh, the results of the studies are, uh, are quite uh, surprising or rather the lack of, uh, but I will, uh, I, I will refer to it um, a bit later. So um, since the publication of the model, we have been working on its verification and uh, we did some uh, studies, uh, um, but also we recently conducted a systematic review and meta-analysis of the studies published to date. Uh, it should appear in pain soon uh, because it's, it's been already accepted. And um, first of all, our meta-analysis showed that observational learning induces small to medium um, placebo effects in pain. So it's quite good uh, uh, method of, indu uh, of inducing placebo effects. Um, uh, and if I may reflect on our research, I would say that whatever we do with observational learning, it works, which is like, uh, you know, with classical conditioning, you never know whether you will be able to induce placebo effects in your lab. Uh, but with observational learning, actually, we, um, uh, we usually succeed, uh, which, is, uh, which is nice to succeed uh, in this, uh, with the studies. With uh, classical conditioning, we, we were like, uh, especially with this hidden conditioning, we're like always surprised uh, how uh, difficult it is to, to, to induce this effect. But um, our meta-analysis also um, uh, revealed that observational learning can modulate pain expectations. So that observational learning not only changes pain, but also uh, changes pain expectations. But it is not actually clear uh, whether changes in expectancy are somehow uh, associated with changes in pain, as most of the studies included in, uh, in the meta-analysis didn't report 
any results of correlation, regression, or mediation, which was surprising actually, because when you, uh, you know, when you measure expectations and you measure pain rate, pain um, experience, usually it is quite easy to uh, to look for the associations. But most of the studies uh, didn't look for them. Actually. Uh, one exception that we found was our own study on verbal modeling, which is, as I said, very specific type of, um, uh, of modeling. And, but this study showed that at least uh, changes in pain were correlated with changes in expectancy. So um, uh, we have also some unpublished yet uh, studies uh, on observational learning that, that show that expectancy plays uh, a mediating role in placebo and nocebo effects induced by observational learning. Anyway, uh, it's striking that uh, further research is still needed to fully understand the role of expectancy in observationally induced uh, um, uh, placebo uh, effects. Coming back to our meta-analysis, Another uh, uh, surprise that we uh, had in our uh, results was that uh, we found very weak evidence for the role of trait empathy in placebo effects induced by observational learning. It was quite obvious for us and also for other uh, 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 researchers who did studies on observational learning that it, the effects should be related to uh, 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 empathy. And that is why in most of the studies, empathy as a trait was measured. And also it was measured by the same uh, scale, which is nice that different labs use the same scale, I mean, interpersonal reactivity index. But because of that, we were able to combine all the studies uh, in uh, studies results in uh, meta regression. And we're so surprised to see that actually we have only evidence for very weak association between just one uh, scale empathic concern, so well, actually subscale of the um, interpersonal reactivity index uh, and um, relation with, uh, uh, with placebo effects. So uh, again, further studies are needed. Uh, and maybe it's time to also look for empathy as a state, uh, because people who differ in uh, empathy trait may not be as, uh, you know, may not be as involved in the studies. So I mean that it is in the studies in the lab in which sample size is usually up to 30 people per group. It is very difficult to find the differences in, um, uh, in uh, empathy as a trait, to find people who are high in empathy and people who are low in empathy. Usually most of them are just, uh, you know, uh, in the middle. Uh, but if we uh, focus on empathy as a state, maybe we will, um, uh, 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 we will find uh, actually the role of empathy. And we are now like conducting a study uh, on empathy as a state um, and the, the, the results are not very uh, still um, promising, but we continue. We'll see what, uh, 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 what we'll uh, find. Um, So uh, um, generally in recent years, our lab was focused on uh, uh, examining various factors that may influence the placebo effects induced by observational learning. Our main, I would say main conclusion from, uh, from all the studies uh, done uh, in our lab was that, as I said before, that observational learning is very powerful method for inducing placebo effects, regardless actually of the type of placebo intervention that we use or whether the model was presented as another participant of a, or, or our coworker. This was quite surprising because we wanted to man manipulate the level of uh, identification of participants with the model. So in one group, we told them that the model is actually one of them, is another participant. Uh, and in the second group, we told them that the model is actually one of uh, experimenter who will help to show how the, um, uh, 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 how the experiment uh, is to be going on. And we found no differences so actually uh, um, in comparison with control group without modeling these two groups didn't differ in placebo effects. We found, uh, we found similar, similar results. 
And interestingly, um, recently in the case of verbal modeling, we found something surprising uh, that uh, individual uh, pain ratings were more effective in inducing placebo hypoalgesia compared to those coming from a group of uh, people. Uh, so if we showed participants just uh, pain ratings coming from one person, they were effective in inducing placebo hypoalgesia. But if we showed them ratings coming from alleged eight participants, they were not effective. And it was regardless whether they saw uh, on a video participants uh, uh, the models or not. And so this was quite um, uh, uh, interesting result. Um, but most importantly, our studies uh, uh, have shown that the characteristics of the model matter and are related to the magnitude of placebo effects induced by observational learning. First, uh, years ago, we found that sex of the model um, uh, is an important factor. Uh, recently, we found that social status of the model and self-confidence of the model influence placebo effects in, uh, induced by observational learning. So specifically, we found that male models of higher st social status and demonstrating more self-confident behaviors induce stronger um, uh, uh, placebo uh, effects. And finally, uh, moving to operant conditioning, uh, it's first important to note that the probability of voluntary in case of, uh, uh, in case of classical conditioning, we talk about involuntary behaviors, but here we have voluntary behavior and the probability of voluntary behavior increases or decreases depending on its consequences. So when behavior is reinforced, uh, it tends to increase while punishment leads to its decrease. And according to operant conditioning account of placebo effects, a behavior such as taking a placebo, which is actually usually voluntary, um, uh, and taking placebo when it is immediately and contingently uh, followed by a reinforcer, such as attention from others or pain relief, is more likely to occur in the future. Conversely, uh, a behavior followed by a punisher, such as pain or withdrawal of attention from others is diminished. Uh, and recently, uh, first of all, we were really interested in, uh, in operant conditioning and we started with uh, systematic review and meta-analysis of studies on the effects of operant conditioning on pain without any placebo. Um, uh, we showed that, again, like with classical conditioning and observational uh, learning, we showed that uh, operant conditioning uh, may change pain experience without uh, any placebo uh, intervention. Um, and uh, uh, at least we showed that uh, uh, it can um, uh, induce uh, both um, uh, um, allodynia and hyperalgesia. Uh, th th there were not many studies, actually, like eight, but uh, so it shows that this is uh, this is just the beginning. But anyway, they the the, the overall the effects were uh, uh, were promising. And uh, operant conditioning was not uh, previously considered a mechanism of placebo effects. Um, and uh, we uh, developed uh, the paradigm to study um, placebo effects in a laboratory setting and provided first empirical support for operant conditioning as a mechanism of placebo effect. We found that reinforcing the experience of low pain following placebo stimu stimuli combined with punishing uh, high pain following placebo stimuli um, induced actually placebo hypoalgesia, even uh, when neither reinforcers nor punishers were um, uh, delivered anymore. Recently, we, we did another study, it is now under um, uh, uh, review, which also shows similar, similar effects. But anyway, uh, these are just first, uh, 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 first studies. Based on um, what we know about operant conditioning and its role in pain behavior, for example, the famous uh, Fordyce account, um, uh, I have recently proposed seven lines of research to explore the role of op uh, operant conditioning in producing placebo effects. Uh, but as I said, with classical conditioning and observational learning, I would even highlight it more than in case of operant conditioning, we need more and more data because it's just, uh, uh, just the beginning. 
And uh, in conclusion, uh, I would like to come back to a seminal um, uh, model by uh, uh, Luana Koloka and uh, Frank Millers. Um, definitely the, 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 the um, research findings that we have coming from different labs, which is nicely showed, for example, by our meta-analysis on uh, uh, op uh, observational learning, strongly support um, uh, this model. Uh, but recent evidence also suggests that we can extend it in several ways. Uh, for example, first of all, we uh, there is this kind of evidence that classical conditioning may induce placebo effects, not only in, uh, with involvement of expectancy. We have this operant conditioning account. It's like I said, very new, but uh, uh, and needs um, uh, needs elaboration. And of course, observational learning, uh, it's a quite, uh, it's a quite uh, complex uh, process. And we know that at least models characteristics as observers uh, characteristics like empathy may have an effect uh, uh, on it. Um, so I would like to uh, conclude uh, with, first of all, uh, may, uh, I would like to thank National Science Center in Poland, which founds our uh, uh, research uh, uh, under so within several grants. Uh, I would like also to thank my team uh, and uh, thank uh, to our collaborators, including especially uh, Luana Koloka, uh, for their contribution in many ways uh, to uh, what we are uh, doing. Um, uh, if you are interested in what we are doing now, if you like to somehow collaborate, please visit our web page. You may just scan a QR code now or just go to the uh, web page you can see, uh, the, the address of the web page you can see. And um, uh, uh, lastly, uh, as I'm the member of the um, uh, Next, uh, um, EFIC Congress uh, member of the Scientific Program Committee, I would like to warmly uh, invite you to come to Europe, come to Budapest in September. Uh, we would have a really nice uh, um, uh, interdisciplinary program with some, uh, not ours, but some, <laughs> but some insights on, uh, on placebo effects. Also, some discussions are uh, planned. Um, so I uh, really hope we would be able to meet uh, meet soon. Uh, thank you very much.